and welcome to Colour and Chat with Colouring F. Um, we're going to do this picture today and it is in Fairy Tale Princesses and Storybook Darlings by Hannah Lynn. So I've done one in this picture, um, I did Jasmine. So I thought we'd do the blue fairy from Pinocchio, so there she is and there's little Pinocchio. So I'm going to use my polychromous pencils for this. Um, because I haven't used polychromos in this book yet, so I don't know what they're gonna be like, but I thought I'd give it a whirl. Um, so hopefully I won't knock the camera. Apologies if I do. I literally have got the tripod right in front of me. My legs are sort of intertwined in it because I could not for the life of me get it set up so that I could have it so it was facing the right way, otherwise it'll be filming sideways. And I don't know, I don't, for me, I don't like having my videos being filmed sideways because I have to keep them that way because otherwise it, if I flip it to portrait, you don't see as much. So um, I prefer them this way, it just means I have to colour at a really, really odd angle. <laughs> but um, I think it should be okay. So um, I'm going to do the skin first, I think. So I'm going to get my swatch book out here. And I've got to find my polychromous. So I've got so many, so many swatches in here. Various, di various different pencils. Uh, nope, that's not them either. Oh, here we go. So I'm gonna do her with like, um, I think I'm gonna do her with pale skin. So um, I just need to see. So you probably want this light flesh. So let me go and grab that out of my poly. So light flesh. Got that one. Um, and then I think I might use cinnamon. So I'm kind of going like with the colour scheme that Sammy uses for with the prisoners, but I'm just choosing like the similar shades. So this light flesh would be like the light peach in Prisma colour. The nectar is the cinnamon in this one. And, and now I want like a kind of Henry colour. So there's Pompeii and red, but I think that might be a little bit too red. So Phoenician red might be a bit better. So I think we'll go for Phoenician red. Uh, mm -hmm. There we go. And then I want a brown. So I think probably dark sepia might be the best one. So there we go. Um, so these are the colours that Sammy would tend to use for, I mean she does use polychromous but when she uses the um, Prisma colours, and I I got this from her so this is what I use. So if you're you do using Prisma colour it will be light peach, nectar, henna, um, espresso, um, I don't know why I always want to say espresso but it's espresso. <laughs> I just want to say it wrong. So out of the polychromous, the Fabulous Castell polychromous, I'm using light flesh, cinnamon, Venetian red, and dark sepia. So these are the colours that we're going to use for her skin, okay? So I have no idea how it's going to turn out, having not used <laughs> them all here. I am going to just give my Venetian red and my cinnamon, actually I'm going to, apart from the sepia one, I'm going to just give them a little sharp and just sit there. A little bit sharp because I find with the polychromous if they're not fairly sharp they tend to oh no 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 oh, oh my pencil almost fell on the floor then that would have been a disaster because I'm not exactly in the position to be able to easily pick things up off the floor so I'm just gonna give them a bit sharper because I find that they work better for me when they're like more sharper when they start to get a bit uh, blunter so even though that to me isn't that sh that's uh, still fairly sharp I just find the colour doesn't come out as well as I would like it. I find that they need to be sharp, so I'm just going to do that. So, I have ordered My Mermaids by Hannah Lynn. Um, so, there, and then, then I'll have two books by her. Um, because I've seen, Sam, I've seen Sammy, and I've seen a few others as well on Instagram colouring it, and I just thought, actually... That just looks so pretty, like I love all the mermaids and I love the fact that you could use really nice bright colours and of course stickles because he does not like to get stickles. Um, and I just felt like, you know what, I like these pictures so I'm going to buy this book so I'm waiting for that to come in the paste. So I'm just going to really lightly go over, I might zoom in a little bit so we can see her face just a little bit better. So I'm going to just go over really lightly with the um, 
light flesh, so you probably won't see much on the camera <laughs> whilst I'm doing this, because I'm going quite lightly. So, um, yes, yeah, so I'll try to make it so we can see everything in this video, I'm hoping. Um, but we'll have to see, because unfortunately I'm a little bit busier <laughs> these days um, than I was when I first started my YouTube channel. Um, because I was not as busy, so it was fine. So yeah, I do apologise, I have not done a video in ages, I'm so sorry. But sometimes I'll have a bit of free time and then I just feel like actually I want to sit and colour something I'm already colouring in. I want to spend that, that time doing that, so that is why sometimes I don't film. But... Uh, it's a bank holiday weekend, so I've got three days, um, you know, just to do whatever I would like to do. So I thought, well, why not do a little bit of filming? That would be really nice. So, so it's lovely and sunny outside. We've been really blessed with the weather for the bank holiday because it's about 22, 23 degrees. I think it's 23 degrees tomorrow. It's 22 today. And it was about the same yesterday. And I'm so happy that it's finally warm because literally we haven't really had spring. I think it's just been perpetual winter. <laughs> and I was just getting so fed up of it being cold all the time. And I don't know, as soon as the sun comes out, you know, it's just so nice. Everyone wants to be outside. Like, I just feel like life comes to everything. I mean, not that, you know, in the winter time and things like that, in autumn, of course, there's like people still outside and there's still events that you can go to, but I don't know what it is. It's just, it feels much better when, you know, you're actually able to go outside in nice weather and not have to worry about it being cold. <laughs> um, so, I don't know, I, I swear, because I used to love winter. Winter used to be my favourite season because I used to hate the heat. Um, and, you know, I still don't like it when it's really, really hot because, unfortunately... I do find, I'm like everyone, I think everyone struggles when it's really, really hot. You know, when it's like really humid, there's not, not much you can do about that. I think everyone probably struggles with it. Um, but yeah, I used I lived in a house at uni when I was at university, my second year. We, it was like a flat, but it was kind of, it had an upstairs and a downstairs. So I think it's called a masonette if it's got an upstairs and downstairs. Um, but it had no heating system in it whatsoever. I was absolutely frozen the whole winter, so I had to go to bed with a hot water bottle, a hoodie on, a blanket, instead of the blanket on top of the bed, it was in the bed with me, wrapped around me, um, and then my duvet, so it was just ridiculous, like, you know, nobody in their right mind in in this country at all, young or old or otherwise, should have to live in a house with no heating, so um, I don't understand how on earth that is passing I hope it has got a heating system in it now. There was no bo boiler, it had like, um, apparently it was supposed to blow like warm air around the house, but it was broken and it was obviously quite old, so it did not work. Um, but no, I, I honestly, I mean, everywhere in the world, honestly, obviously, unfortunately, it's not everywhere in the world. People don't live in, in um, decent accommodation, sadly, but you know, especially when we have like lots of laws and things in this country, you would think that they would, you know, not let people live in conditions like that but I don't know what it is some student houses are just terrible like there's so many broken things or there's loads of mold everywhere and I know it's not just student housing that have that there's um other people unfortunately do live in houses like that too but yeah it's just a shame it's like why like you know we're people <laughs> you should let us like you know have some decent basic human stuff but oh well at least experiences over and done with now so um luckily i do not have to live well hopefully i won't have to have to live in a in a place with no heating again but you never know <laughs> uh, hopefully i won't um so yeah that was my experience and um, because it was so so cold um i just decided after that that i actually i prefer the, the warmth because you can at least be warm you might be too warm, but, you know, you can kind of find some sort of way to cool down. But I'd rather be too warm than really, really cold. So, yeah, that's me. I'm going with that now. Um, mm, Tilly came downstairs. I don't know if she wants to go outside because it's nice and sunny. So, excuse me for a moment. I'm going to have to go and see if the cat has decided to... She'll, we haven't got cat flaps. She sits by the door. So, I'm going to just quickly go and check and see if she's... um sat by the door wanting to go out because if she is then I'm gonna have to let her out. Ugh. Oof. Oh my word that was so dangerous. Ah. <laughs>
Right, so if you want to go outside, I'll open the door for you. Apologies, right, so I've let her out now. <laughs> she wasn't sat by the door, but <laughs> and I forgot my other tripod was like right by where I was sat and I knocked it over and I was like, oh no. Right, okay, um, I'm really, really sorry, but I may slightly bump the camera, so I have to try and squeeze my leg back under. Ugh. There we go, I did it, woohoo. Right, hopefully the cat won't <laughs> bother us. We have no cat flap, so we have to let her out, unfortunately. I'm just going to have some water. Um, I bought this new, not that you can see because I'm super zoomed in. Don't see I bought this new water bottle the um, yesterday from a stationery shop called Typo. It's Australian, but we finally got one in the UK and I was so excited because when I went to Australia, I loved it. It was amazing. It was the most amazing shop I'd ever been in. So many stationery things like notebooks, pens, but they got loads of craft stuff in there as well. And they got loads of, in fact, I bought a new pencil case in there as well. This is my pencil case that I bought. So it's like golden shiny at the top and then it's got like a marbly effect there. So sorry, that's like super zoomed in. Because I thought the pencils I'm working in on a picture I could put in there. So I'm just going to have a sip of water. Ooh. Yeah, I decided to, um, I've got a plastic water bottle, that Mickey Mouse one. But um, because I'll see the whole, we need to try not use plastic anymore, I thought, okay. Um, maybe I should get a metal one and they've got some nice metal ones in there so I thought I'd get that one because I really like the pattern it's just a shame it doesn't hold a lot of water in there so now I'm using cinnamon and I'm going to go in and put a bit of shadow in on the picture so I'm not pressing really hard again I'm being quite um, quite gentle so yes I thought I'd go in. but when they have so that was about £12 and it's 300 millilitres or if you're into ounces, it's 11.83. Well, they put FL ounce. I don't know what FL sounds for, but it's ounces. Um, we measure in we measure in millilitres and litres, but sometimes we have the ounces as well, because I'm guessing, I think Taipei have got stalls around the world, so it must be that some countries will see go by ounces and not by millilitres. So fair enough, you want to know what it is in your local measuring <laughs> measurement <laughs> um so yeah it doesn't really hold a lot um but they did have a 500 mil one but it was 20 pounds for an extra 150 mils and it was eight pounds more and i was like really i don't think it should be that much more also it was a bit chunkier and i felt like that bottle if i was gonna take a small bag I'd, it would fit in my small bag whereas like um the other one would maybe not fit in there so I prefer because they have some really big plastic water bottles as well that are really nice, but they're massive and they really would not fit in your bag. You'd struggle to fit that in a bag. If you had a big ruck rucksack around all day, you would, but I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to get a massive one. So, but yeah, I thought I'd try a metal one. I still have my other one because um, I, I don't know whether if that plastic it's made out of is okay or whether it, you know, we can't have anything plastic anymore. I have no idea. Um, but I thought I'll go for metal. So metal is what I've gone for and I really like it and it also keeps your drink nice and cool because it's got a thing in it to keep so it keeps it nice and cold but well not that I like really cold water I'm one of those weird people that like room temperature water unless it's absolutely boiling but I can't drink water if it's really really cold because it just I don't know it just sort of like numbs your throat and you can't really get the quenching of your thirst from it I don't like really cold fruit either I'm really random like um, so I really like pineapple and my dad, like, he, well, my dad doesn't always do it, but generally my dad's the one that cuts the pineapple. So we get, like, a proper one and then we have, like, a, a handle thing that you turn in it and it just cuts it for you. So, um, it, like, does a little spiral, it spiral and cuts it out. It's quite, quite easy and quite cool to do. Um, but we also keep it in the fridge to keep it fresh, but I can't eat it if it's straight out the fridge because it's too cold. And it just, I just feel like you can't taste the fruit very well. And same with strawberries, like, they just don't taste that nice when they're really cold. Like, I feel like I can't really taste them. Um, so I, I tend to try and, I try to take them out. 
um, a few hours before I'm going to eat them, so like two hours or something before I eat them, so they can get up to room temperature. And then if I forget, sometimes I put my mic my uh, pineapple in the microwave for like a few seconds just to <laughs> heat up. But there's been the occasional time when I've accidentally done it a bit too long, and then it's been really warm. But I was like, I'd rather eat the warm pine pineapple than the cold pineapple. So that's me and my really weird thing about not liking cold food. Because I'm also, I don't like cold pizza, I don't like cold pasta. I mean, I could eat it, but I don't like it, you know, if I had the choice to have it warm. Um, the only cold meat that, well, I, I do eat cold meat, so I'll eat cold chicken and cold ham and things like that. But the it's only really like ham that I like cold. Everything else I like warm, like, so I prefer my chicken warm. Um, I prefer all my meat warm. Bacon, especially, prefer warm. But then I don't mind it in a BLT sandwich, when because it's cold in a BLT sandwich, but I don't mind it in that. That is fine. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit weird. A bit weird. And I don't like reheated pizza either because it just, it's a bit rubbish. <laughs> um, but I find it really hard to find a decent uh, frozen or like fresh pizza in the supermarket. So I really like Asda's ones. They're so, so nice. The ones that they have in the, I think it's just Asda's own and they're in the refrigerated section. So they're, you know, you can put them in the fridge straight away or you can put them in the freezer. But then I always find, that I just, I don't like the frozen ones so much anymore. I just find they're a bit meh. Um, and I did kind of like Sainsbury's, like, you know, not frozen one, but even that I don't like. And I decided to go to their deli counter to get one from there. And it just had so much cheese on it. I think I need a balance of cheese and tomato on it. And I just really could not taste any tomato and I just did not like it. So I stopped eating it. So I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna go for that one. Um, so yeah, it's kind of annoying because it's like I really want to find a nice pizza. But I remember when I was little, um, the only pizza I used to eat when I was little because I was a very fussy eater when I was little. Um, I mean, I still am to some degree today, but I was way worse when I was a child. Um, my sister too, the only pizza I would eat was pe would be Pizza Hut pizza. That would be the only pizza I'd have. I would not like any other pizza for some weird reason. Um, <laughs> But of course now I can branch out and I like different types of pizzas. I mean, I still only like a margarita or um, a ham and pineapple. Those are the only ones I'll kind of eat or if it's got bacon on it. But I'm really, really weird. So I like chicken, right? But I don't like chicken on pizza. Just, I mean, I could, again, it's again, again, it's something I could eat. I could eat it, but I just prefer to not have chicken on my pizza. I'm just a very strange person. But, um, oh well, makes you more interesting, I suppose. <laughs> um... Yeah, so I'm hoping tomorrow, because it's going to be the hottest day tomorrow, it'll be 23 degrees, that I can go for a bike ride with my mum, because uh, my dad's working, so it would just be the two of us, and I thought, oh, let's go and do something, and she said, oh, what about a bike ride, so I think that'd be quite nice to go and do, I haven't ridden my bike at all this year, so I really, really do want to go out and ride it, because unfortunately, because of the really long winter that we've had into our spring, um, it's just not been, it's either been really rainy or it's just too cold and I like to ride my bike when it's a bit warmer. <laughs> and there's um, a pub at the end of the cycle path that we go on and it's quite nice to just sit there and have some ice cream. So um, that's quite nice. But yeah, I mean, sometimes I do have a like, uh, they sometimes, well, they don't really have a lot of nice beers that I like there, but I might have a bit of cider, but I don't like to drink too much, you know, just have half a pint because I don't want to like ride my bike having had like a pint or something and fall off it. So that wouldn't be good. Um, let's not do that. So um, yeah, I tend to just have like some ice cream and maybe a half pint or something if I like it. Because I think I had a beer there once and it was really not nice. It was horrible. And I could not drink it. And my mum was, she had some to try and see, you know, so it wasn't, wouldn't get left. And literally, so it had like only, I'd only drank like that much. Um, where's the camera thing? I'm trying to put my fingers in it and it's not working. Sorry, I just hit the camera. Oh, right. It's because I was such an update. I only drank like that much of it and I was just like, no, I can't drink it. It's horrible. <laughs> it was really, really not my type um, that I liked. But yes, yeah, so that'd be nice to go there. I really need to start booking my holiday as well for the summer because I really want to go to Austria. So I went last year to, I went to Vienna, I went to some other places too, I went to Budapest and Bratislava um, and I really would quite like to go to Vienna, Salzburg and uh, Lubyenia, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, it's the capital of Slovenia and I'd like to go there um, so I'm hoping 
that my mum, <laughs> my mum um, will be able to come with me because I'd rather not go by myself, but I may have to. Um, I don't mind traveling like by myself. I have done it before, but I prefer, to, it's nicer to go with someone. It's just, you know, you've got someone to talk to because otherwise you're sort of just like, uh. but um, I'd probably go and stay in a hostel. So then, then I could hang out with people who were, you know, by themselves anyway. So um, I think I'm gonna put some down. It's really hard to some. I, the one thing I find with shading skin is I find it really hard to figure out exactly where the shadows and things should go. So I'm hoping now I've got lots and lots of pictures of lots of ladies. It's really strange. There doesn't seem to be many men in coloring books. There are some men in coloring books, but none of the ones I have have got have got a man in it. They're all women. So um. Yes, yeah, so I've got lots of ladies I can colour in, but um, so I'm hoping that with some good practice, I will know where to put where to put things, especially with the Gems and Flowers book because it's got grayscale, and I found that so handy when I was colouring that picture in um, the other week. I was just like, yes, I know exactly where to put them because you've put them in for me. Um, and I just thought the skin looked lovely on that one. So I forgot to tell you guys that Last time, I did a calorie chat and I completely, completely forgot to tell you. But um, I said ages ago that I was doing that Ancestry DNA. Well, I finally got my results like a couple weeks ago. Um, I was a little bit disappointed in terms of that I thought I would have more Ancestry from Europe. And I literally have, <laughs> I'm 79% English and Welsh. Um, I didn't know I had any Welsh in me at all, so that was kind of cool to know. And then I'm 18% Scottish and Irish, so I already knew I was a bit Scottish and a bit Irish anyway, so that wasn't, like, surprising. Um, and then I was just 3% Swedish, which is really cool, and that's the thing I'm more, more excited about. I'm really excited to find out that I have some Swedish ancestry, so I think that's so cool. But yeah, I was hoping that maybe I would also have, I know, some German or some French in there, because we had, like, Anglo-Saxons and the Normans invade, so, um, as well as the Vikings, um... So, you know, a lot of um, British people have, uh, you know, a lot of us ha um, have got um, ancestry from all over Europe. Um, but it seems to be that, <laughs> in my case, I'm mostly English. And it's really funny as well because I told my parents, because I said, oh, well, the results um, that I get will only be true, for, like, for, like, part, only part of it's going to be true for one of you. So one of you will have... I guess the same, oh, well, they probably wouldn't have the same ancestry, but for the, the Swedish, for example, only one of them is probably going to have the Swedish, but which one is it? I have no idea. Um, but at least for my sister, we can say that the ancestry will be the exact same for the, the both of us. So. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of intrigued to find out where the Swedish ancestry comes from, because I was thinking, oh, you know, maybe it's from the Vikings. Um, but then on Instagram, some lovely Swedish ladies were telling me that actually the Swedes didn't really go, the Swedish Vikings that is, they didn't actually really go to invade Britain. That was mostly the Danish and the Norwegian. So I, I did look this up as well on the internet and it did say that um, there were some, but there weren't many. And it's because Sweden, the, most of their shoreline actually faces Russia and Estonia and like Poland. So they went and, and invaded, well, invaded all traded I'm not really sure because apparently there were more gentle the Swedish ones Swedish Vikings but um I don't know much about them so I can't really say for sure um but yeah so that was quite interesting I was thinking oh okay so then I was thinking well if they didn't come over when it was the Viking you know when the Vikings invaded like how have I got Swedish like ancestry I was thinking well did like somebody just randomly come over to England like, oh, I mean, they might not have even come to England. They could have come to Ireland or Scotland or Wales. It could have been either one of those. <laughs> um, but somebody obviously came over, maybe came over, and then either stayed or they had a family. Um, or I had an English... Oh, an English why am I saying English? Or I had an ancestor, because I don't know where. They could have been from any part of the UK and Ireland, so who knows? Um... um so I could have had an ancestor that went over to Sweden and then met a Swedish lady <laughs> or a man because it could have been a Swedish, oh wait, yeah, they could have met a Swedish man or a lady and then had a family with them because it either would have been a male or female ancestor that had gone to Sweden. Um, you know, that's just my guessings. And then I also found out, again from an, a lovely lady on Instagram, 
who was Swedish, that apparently when they migrated to America in the 1800s, that most of the time they had to come over to Great Britain to get a, a, a boat to, um, the, to America from, from the UK. So it might have been that somebody maybe stayed, like decided they'd come to the UK and stay, or they had a fling with a lovely lady and then a child was born and then the, uh, the, you know, the Swedish person that came over went to America but their offspring was left in the UK because you know, things in those days were a bit different to what they are now. I mean, I suppose not really, but you know, it was, uh, it's, I just thought, you know, that, that might, that could have been what happened. <laughs> A child out of wedlock, perhaps. <laughs> child, because you know, in those days, we'll see, it was a big bad thing, whereas now it's absolutely fine, and I'm glad it is because it should be. Um, yeah, so I just thought, okay, maybe that's what happened. Because I, I do wonder, um, so I'm going to go back over with my light flesh now, just to sort of blend out some of the um, cinnamon. Because, yeah, I do wonder, because it's 3%, I know it's not really that high, but I was think I do think, well, if it was, say, a Viking uh, ancestor, would it be even lower because um, they are, you know, because they, they came over, like, over a thousand years ago, so would it be lower percentage because they're older? Um or, you know, maybe it could be that if they came over in the 1800s, it would make sense that it would be that 3%. So that's the thing. But the good thing is, I suppose, if they came over in the 1800s, is that I should theoretically be able to figure out if, you know, who that who that relative is or that ancestor is. I should be able to, unless, of course, <laughs> they just had a fling with the person and their name is not on any birth certificate for any registered child that they did not know they had. Um, so then you'd probably just have to guess at that one. Um, but yeah, so it does make me want to kind of explore the family records a bit. So we have done some family ancestry already. Like we've, my um, uncle and my granddad and my dad have already done a bit of research. So I think, I don't know how far back they've gone, 18 something. Um, and we found out that basically some relative of ours came over from Ireland, which sadly does not mean I can get an Irish passport. <laughs> they're not, they're not close enough. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Um, although I, I was, I was thinking, I was like, oh well, maybe I could go to Sweden and be like, I'm three percent Swedish. Please, can I have a Swedish passport so I can stay in the EU, please? Well, I mean, I wouldn't be staying in the EU, but it just means that you know, I could still get um EU citizenship rights. <laughs> Um, and all the other stuff that comes with it, but because some that's what some people are doing. So if they've got like um, if they've if they're like half French or you know they've got a grandfather that's German or something, quite a few young people like me um, are getting passports of from that country just so that they can be like so they can ha be in EU slash also not because obviously UK won't be. That's if they ever finalise the deal. <laughs> Who knows? That one's to be determined on that. Um, so yeah, so that's that's quite nice that they, you know, they'll be able to do that. So I'm using, oh, you can't really see because my hand's like blocking it. This is Venetian red. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, you can see it. Oh, yeah. This is Venetian red. So I'm just going to go over like some of the areas. And again, I'm going to be quite light because I don't want it to be too overpowering. And actually, I really like how the polys are going on this paper. I feel like they are working quite well. The prisoners, I felt like, did not work really well on this, but I feel like the polys and the loomies do, because maybe they're slightly harder pencils. And I have a feeling that's what some people have said. Like, I think when I've watched um, Anne from A Colourful Life do some things on Create Space Paper, I'm pretty sure she said that harder pencils are better on it. So, um, I think she's used those prisoner colour very thin. I've been very tempted to buy some, but then I just thought, you know what, would I use them? So I'm trying I'm trying to be like that. I'm trying to think, well, well, if I buy this, will I use it? Because I I've got a couple I've got my Crayola pencils and then I've got those um scorpion ones and I haven't really used them that much. So that's why I'm thinking mind you they weren't expensive so that's fine, I don't mind, but part of me just think if I buy all these other pencils, will I use them? Because I almost bought the Derwent Pro Colours ages ago, which I think I did say, but I didn't because I thought, well, will I use them? Will I? So yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to be, you know, if I'm gonna get something, I wanna make sure I use it. 
type thing. But yes, anywho, I'm very um, interested in the fact that I have some Swedish ancestry, which is so cool. So now I can go for Sweden in the Eurovision Song Contest. Woohoo! Because we, well, we never win. <laughs> That's next week, by the way. So um, I don't know if people, well, people in Europe will of course know what it is, but people outside Europe, um, I know Australia do, because now Australia are in it, randomly, we just decided that one year, oh hey, Australia watch it abroad, let's let them be in it for one, it was just meant to be the one-off, and then they've been in it the last two years, so it's really cool, um, so who knows, maybe it'll be global, global Eurovision soon, um, because I think there's a couple of countries that are in it that aren't actually technically in the EU anyway. Not EU, what am I on about? They're not technically in Europe, but we, you know, they're either they're right on the doorstep of Europe or I don't know. But we include them anyway. And I don't mind. It's fine. Not a problem. Generally, they're all good. But yeah, it's weird. So it's notorious for having really cheesy songs. Um, and ours have been quite bad the last, I mean, there's been a couple of goodish ones, I would say the last couple of years, we've been a bit better, but there's just been some ones from the UK that have been just atrociously bad. And, you know, we all was like, oh, we get nil point, because uh, uh, they do it in French, so they do, they do the points in French and English, so nil point means no points, so we got nil point one year, and it went downhill from there. <laughs> that one year we got nil point, but that song was awful, so part of me does think, mm, you probably deserved it. Um, so basically, like, your country state is hosted, whatever country won, wins the year before hosted, so last year Portugal won, so it's in Portugal this year. And it was a beautiful, beautiful song that they sang last year. And oh my word, I'm really hoping the guy sings it again next week because normally they, the person that won sings the song before. So I'm hoping so because it was a lovely, lovely song and I really, really liked it. So, um, uh, yep, so it'll be there. So your song, your country sings and you can't vote for your own country. You can only vote for um, other countries. So... And because we have so many countries in it now, there's competition in order to qualify for the final, but certain countries automatically get to go in, um, the winning country, and then whoever fronts the money, so like the UK, Germany, France, Spain, Italy, we all, we all put money in it, so we all get to be in it all the time. And then all the other countries, they have to qualify, so they have to like, they do preliminary like competition rounds, which you can see on TV and then they get voted in, um, but uh, yeah, I just think the last couple of years, the quality of the songs are just so much better, and I really like them, and I think our song this year is actually pretty good, but then, you know, I've, I've seen, listened to some of the others, and I'm thinking, well, I think the others are also pretty good, so it's hard to say, you know, if we will do well or not, but um, ha so basically, because they were saying that the voting system was really unfair, because uh, quite a lot of countries that were next door to each other were voting for each other, <laughs> which, you know, to be fair, they may just generally really like their neighbour's song, which, you know, is okay. But I think there was just a little bit of a scandal over the voting, so they changed it so that um, there's a panel of judges that votes, and basically half the votes are made up of the, this panel of judges, and then half of them are made up um, by the public now. So um, it's, it's made it a little bit fairer, so you haven't got, like, some countries that are near, like, for example... <laughs> And I'm not doing this to sound bad in any way, but when obviously the Soviet, when we had the Soviet Union, obviously lots of those Eastern European countries were under Russia. A lot of them would be voting for Russia. Now it may have been that they really liked the Russian songs because you know they have some really good Russian songs. I quite like most of them. Um, but um, this new rule, we've seen that they're not always voting for each other, and it wasn't just like people were voting for Russia by the way it was lots of other countries voting for other ones that were next door to them as well um so don't don't worry it's just the whole thing if you look it up on the internet you can find all the information about all this voting stuff yourself but anyway I think it's a bit better now like um you know I do feel like it's um I guess more fair I mean I don't know if it was unfair before, it was kind of, I was a teenager at those times, so I didn't really pay attention to that, really, and I still don't really now, but, um, I think it's fine now, um, but yeah, it's nice, and, um, I think, and see, a lot of people always complain, like, oh, we never get any points, because people in Europe, they find us annoying, because we decided to leave the EU, and then all this other stuff, oh, because some of, some politics, unfortunately, does go into it a little bit, I would say only a little bit, though, um, but I, you know, I found out that basically a lot of the European songs, they play them around Europe for months, 
you know, before the competition, they campaign them, so they're out there, people know about them, and then we just rock up on the night, and then here, there's our song, so of course, like, the other ones are going to have more votes, because they, they've heard that song more, and they like it, they've grown to like it, so, um, I think we have in the past done a bit of promotion, I don't know whether this year we've done a bit where we've gone to other countries, and we're like, hey, this is our song, like it, you know, um, but I think that's, that's fair game, and that respect but yeah I just think well you know come on Britain you can't really expect you know <laughs> us and I think as well we need to have more music from other countries too so this is the light flesh again I think it would be nice if we had some more diverse music which I think we are starting to get there's lots of k-pop isn't there and there's lots and lots of like Spanish or Latin American music sort of coming in the scene now which is quite cool so we just need more like European stuff to come out because that's one thing I like about Netflix they're putting quite a lot of like uh, TV shows from like other countries on there so I'm watching this new one at the moment called Rain and it's Danish and oh my god it's so good <laughs> um, I've only seen like the first and a bit of the second episode but it's like set in a post-apocalyptic world um, and the, the rain so this isn't really spoilers because this will be what it will say on the, the thing so basically the rain contains some virus and it's basically if you're out in the rain you you get rain on you, you're gonna get this virus and go crazy and die and infect other people. So not like a zombie thing. It kind of remind, it really reminds me of The Last of Us actually. It's more like that where you get the really weird tree. They have that weird fungus thing in The Last of Us, but they they stay alive. Whereas I think you just kind of die if you get this. But it's in the rain, so which I also find how is that possible? So they must have like surely the virus have had to get in the water somehow because that that's how the like the rain falls from being soaked up from the clouds isn't it uh, I've got time to have like a science lesson but people should know how rain how rain goes about um so yeah I'm guessing there must be something behind it but anywho I'm sure when I watch more of it I will find out some more about what how and why this happened because that's the one thing I want to know about in the last of us the video game how was this disease thing or this fungus thing created like I don't don't think they said it in the game. It's been ages since I played it. I have a feeling they didn't. They don't say what caused it. Um, they may have done, and I just sort of blocked it out. <laughs> well, I don't think they did. I don't think they did. And um, there may be some theory online, and I just have not looked it up. So um, I'm hoping with the second Last of Us game that they will explain a bit more about that. But it's a really good game. So if you like video games, I highly recommend you play that. Uh, providing you're, you know, the right age, you have to be the right age to play the game. If you're not, then sorry, you have to wait. Um, but yeah, it was a good game. So yeah. Anywho, back to me being, being part Swedish. So yes, I can go for Sweden now in the Eurovision Song Contest. And also, I can also go for them in the World Cup. Um, I'm very unpatriotic when it comes to football. I do not go for England. The various reasons why, but I don't support my own country. I do when it comes to like the Rugby World Cup, like rugby, I'll support rugby. I'll support England in rugby, but I do not support them in football. So a lot of people are like, but why? But yeah, I'm just like, no. <laughs> so I can go for Sweden, woohoo. But I could also go for Wales, Ireland or Scotland. I'm not sure, maybe Ireland might be in it. I don't really know. I don't really follow it. So I'm using the dark secret, so I forgot to say, say to you that. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't really follow the football thing, so it might be that Ireland's in it. Um, so if Ireland is in it, then I could probably go for them too. So, um, yeah, and to be fair, I'd probably go for Wales. Yeah, I, I would. I would go for Wales and Scotland over England. I really would. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And that is, unfortunately, my unpatrioticness to, to my own team. I don't really go for them. But I do go for Team GB in the Olympics, like, you know, I like all that stuff. Okay, I'm re I don't really like how I've done that, so I'm going to use the cinnamon and see if I can blend that out a bit more. I feel like I did not go in with it very well. It's really hard. Um, so yeah, I also thought I would look up some Swedish history, because I, I know some of the Viking stuff anyway, cause, but then I, it's, I guess it would be the Norse and the Danish, um, and the Danish Vikings and not the Swedish ones, so I probably will need to go find out some information about those ones. So this is the cinnamon again. So I thought I would do that. And so I went, to, I did go, I went to the, uh, my bookstore. So we have a really big bookstore called Waterstones. It's basically like, 
a Barnes and Noble, but not. Um, and we have the second biggest one out of London, so it, ours is huge. It's like several floors long. For a really small city, we have a huge bookstore, which I find hilarious. Um, especially when there's like bigger cities and we literally have a bigger Wallstones than they do. <laughs> which I like, because it means there's plenty of books in there. But they only had um, history on Vikings. They did not have any history on just normal Swedish history. You know, well, not normal, but you know, like the last 500 years worth of Swedish history, for example, was not there. So I think I'm gonna have to get a book online. I might have a look at my library though. They may have something in there. So um, I might have a little look and see. Oh no, I dropped a pencil on the floor. I'm gonna have to try and find it. <laughs> I'm going to use the dark sepia, so I'm going to really try hard to like feather it out a little bit. It's so hard, I feel like it's not blending in as well as I'd like. But I'm pressing quite lightly with this, I'm not going really hard um, at all. So yeah, I'd like to learn more about that. I've got actually, a, a, I bought um, a book on the Viking gods ages ago, or I had it for Christmas. And then Neil Gaiman, he recently did a book on Norse mythology and... They had it as a paperback in uh, my local supermarket for like three pounds. So I was like, oh, I'll get that. Um, and unbeknownst to me, this was before I knew, obviously to, it's useful because the, obviously the Swedish Vikings would have had the same gods as the um, all the other ones. So they may have had a couple different ones, who knows? Because I'm sure they probably all had slightly different ones. But they generally had the same ones anyway. So um, that's really cool. So I can, you know, even if they weren't, say, a Viking, my relative, they would have had ancestors if they'd stayed in Sweden their entire life. That would have been Vikings. So it's technically still the same thing. So, um, yeah, that's really cool. So I'm going to read up about that. I'm still trying to finish that book. I bought, I got a book at the library in January and I'm still reading it. I'm just so bad at reading books now. I just do not have the time. Or, well, to be fair, I probably do have the time. It's just I'd rather colour than read. So then it leaves me with not much time to, like, read. So I need to try and, you know, let myself just read for half an hour a day or something so I can try and finish it because I'm so close. I think I've got, like, another 100 or so pages to go. So I'm, I'm getting there. And then I brought, I got two other books at the library, but I think I'm just going to have to return them because I just, I don't think I'm going to have the time. Because I want to read the myth, mythol the Norse mythology book next, so I'm going to just have to be like, I'm sorry, you're going to have to go back to the library. Because, um, you know, I kind of feel bad because somebody else might have wanted to read them and I've kind of like hogged them for like five months. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'll just return all of them and that will probably be best. Yeah, it's if it's a really good book though, then I will actually read it because I got for Christmas I got the new Dan Brown one and I read that within like a week. So it does go to show that if I really love the book, I will read it really quickly. But if it's not one, I mean I enjoy, I'm enjoying the book I read, I'm reading now, but like I don't love it, so I'm not feeling compelled to like read. Like I don't want to. I'm not like there thinking, oh, I must read this. I really want to know what happens. Um. Because I'm like that if uh, with a TV show as well. I was, I've been watching The Alienist and I had like the last two episodes of something to go and it was getting so good. And I was like, I need to sit and watch these. I can't, I can't go on, I can't go on something else. I have to finish this. So I finished it today. It was so good. Um, so yeah, if you like, I, it's basically, it's a psychologist. They call them alienists back in the old, olden days. It's basically like a serial killer in New York and they have to figure out who the killer is. Now where is that pencil that fell on the floor? Aha, there it is. Can I get it with my feet? Yeah. Eh. Oh, I'm gonna have to shove it. No. Oh my word, this is so not cool. Right, I'm gonna have to try and kick it towards my hand so I can pick it up. Oh, I got it, woohoo. Light flesh, because I'm gonna use, um, actually no, I'm gonna use cinnamon first and then I'll use light flesh. Try and get this, because uh, I think it looks a little bit too dark with the shadow there, so we need to kind of blend it out a little bit. So I think what I'll do, because I've still got her arms, her shoulders and her neck, I might move on to something else to colour. Because this has been 45 minutes now, or almost 45 minutes, and all I have coloured is her skin, <laughs> of her face. <laughs> which some of you probably don't mind, 
But at the same time, some of you may want to see other things. So what I'll do is this will probably be the first part and then I'll do another part and we'll colour something else in. Um, I'll probably have to do some of it off camera because otherwise it will take forever. And we don't want that. Yeah, so I uh, watched that anyway. So if you like that sort of thing, you'll you'll enjoy it. Um, but it's all filmed in Budapest, so it was obviously be it was probably being filmed as I was there actually. Um, and they had a scene where there's some boys in a bathhouse, and I didn't take any notice of the. I thought, okay, they're in a bathhouse, and then there was another scene where they're in the changing rooms, and I was like. Oh my god, I know this change of rooms. That's the spa that I went to in, in Budapest because they they have them um, a hot spring there and it's called the Shish Shish I can't it's Hungarian and I can't pronounce it. Shesani it begins with an S. Shesani, Shesani, Shesani. There's I can do the other one. The other bath on the other side, which is in Buddha, is called um the Galert baths, and then it's the Shishani or something ones in Pest. So the, I went to those ones in, in Pest and um I was like, oh my god, I recognise those changing chambers because that's where I got changed. So, um, the little cubicles that you can get changed in and you can keep your things there. And they filmed it there, so I was like, oh, that's so cool that they filmed that there. But the, the bath thing, though, I didn't see, like, the baths that they filmed. That must be, like, a little small bath, like a private-ish one somewhere. Because there's loads in this the place that, if you ever go, there's about, like... 20 different swimming pools slash little bathy things that you can go in there's a, there's a big outdoor one as well there's like three out three outside all different temperatures so there's like a cold one a warm one and then i think it was a slightly cooler one or was it a slightly hot one i can't remember but um yeah and it was really cheap to go in there so if you ever go to budapest go to their spas and they were really cheap compared and you can stay i believe you can stay for as long as you like because um where I so where I live, we we have the only natural hot springs in the entirety of the United Kingdom. So we are a spa town. We have lots of spa stuff. Um, but if you go to the one here, like it's an hour and a half or something, you're allowed in there. Um, and they're not as good. Basically, the the spa we have here is good, but it wasn't as good as the one in Budapest. Um, and it was certainly cheaper. So because they've got a lot of natural hot springs as well in Budapest, which I didn't know about until I went on this little group tour. So there you go. So I highly recommend it. So I'm going to go and use some ivory, and I'm just going to wear it, because I've left some bits quite light. And I haven't really pressed hot firm at all in any of this colouring. I've been quite light, so I'm going to blend a bit of ivory now into her face and I think it's okay so I still need to like work on some you know aspects of shading like I do feel like I wasn't able to like work I don't know I find it really hard to blend like the darker colors in with the skin um but then I suppose these are a little bit different aren't they to the prisma colors I'm kind of using how to use the prisma colors so that could also be why so there we go there's her face so um I'll have to leave the part for now and then I'll probably finish cutting the rest of her skin in and then I can do like her hair or something like or I might start her hair and then I'll leave a bit blank so we can do it um so yeah I'll, I'll do a part two sometime soon maybe later today I've got nothing better to do so I could do I may I may have another part later but I'm gonna leave it there for now so I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon Bye.